Welcome, and thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. We want you to fully engage with us, so feel free to gather your family, invite a friend, or if you're alone, we trust that you'll have a wonderful worship experience with us today. Our worship service will begin in just a few minutes.
Oh, cause you're worthy of all the praise. Oh, oh, oh. One more time, let me, let God hear you in the heavens. Say, let, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Son, your kingdom reigns. Oh, oh, oh. Hear your people praise you, Jesus. You're an amazing God. We worship you. We adore your name. We know you're in this place, Father.
Just that let's have God stop and listen to the cries of our heart this morning the altar is open for you to bend your knee to the King of Kings the Lord of Lords he is in this place to hear your prayers yes he is yes he is Lord oh you're the Lord of all creation Oh, in your own words, raise a praise up to him as he listens to you from the heavens as he sits on his throne. Jesus raise those praises up because he's a worthy God he is an awesome God he is in this place and he reigns forever amen so we're gonna sing this song together as we just lift him up our God is great 
en gloria
Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I didn't want that to stop. Oh, man. Praise God. He reigns. He's in control. He is our God. He supplies our needs. By the way, my name is Pastor Jose Torres. I welcome you again to Commitment Community Church, a place for all nations where we gather as one to praise and glorify his name, to experience his presence. And this morning, we've experienced him in a mighty way. And we pray that he continues to speak and talk to us today as he so will it. We've been um, with a sermon series entitled Heroes. Uh, Pastor Cedric and the other pastors, Pastor Ken, Pastor Mike, and myself had the privilege of speaking about the heroes of the, of the faith. But before we start, let us pray and thank God for this great opportunity. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come in front of your presence one more time, giving you the glory and the honor that you richly deserve. Thank you for your presence here this morning with us, dear Lord. We felt your spirit moving, dear Lord, touching the hearts, healing the hearts, healing those that are sick, dear Lord. And we know that you will speak to us today through the story of Noah, dear Lord, that we may gain understanding as to what our faith should look like, what our walk with you should look like, Heavenly Father. And we ask you, O Lord, that you speak to us today in a special way. Touch our hearts, consider our needs, supply our needs, let your will be done. I ask you that you remove me from this place and go in front of me, dear Lord, and speak to your people according to your will. Let every word that is uttered out of my mouth be guided by your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. I ask you and trust in this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, how sweet it is to feel the presence of God in your life. How sweet it is to walk with the Lord. It overflows in your heart. You can't contain it. And it's so sweet to feel his presence in our lives. And as we continue on with this sermon series about the heroes of the faith, you will see that each individual that we are speaking about, men and women, walked with God. And because they walked with God, their lives were changed and they reflected God to those around them. If you recall, Pastor Cedric opened up this sermon series with the greatest hero of all time. And I'm not talking about Superman. I'm talking about Jesus Christ who came, he died, he was resurrected and lives forevermore. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, your provider. The one that gives you strength in your faith to endure all those things that come against you. So there is no greater hero than our Lord Jesus Christ. But he has blessed men and women throughout the biblical story. And we will see again how God blessed them when they walked with him, when they were close to him, when they obeyed him, when they served him with all they had. Pastor Ken had the privilege of speaking about Abel, Abel, one of Adam's son, who was killed by his brother because his sacrifice was more gratifying to God. He was the first martyr in the biblical stories. Why? Because he chose the sacrifice to God in the proper way. So when you're sacrificing to God your praises and your glory and, and giving him glory and others try to kill you, kill that blessing, you're just a martyr for Jesus Christ and you are just as much as a hero as Abel was. Pastor Mike had the distinct honor of speaking about Enoch. Enoch, 
a man who walked with God, who was pleasing to God because of his work, walk with God. It says that he was one of two that did not experience the death that we will someday endure. He was taken away, not to be seen ever more. I can't wait to get to heaven and ask him, how was that ride <laughs> into heaven? Because that is what, when the trumpet sounds, if you're still here, if you haven't passed from this earth, that is the same thing that's going to happen to you. You will be transformed into a spiritual body. And you will be uplifted into the heavens. And you will experience that ride. If I'm not here, I'm not regretting that because they said the dead will rise first. So I'll be in ahead of you guys. So just understand that when we walk with the Lord, we find favor in him. We find that peace and tranquility that we yearn for. That nothing that this earth may throw at you, that this world may throw at you, can stop that joy and that peace that comforts you in those moments of difficulty. Because we walk with God. Today I had the distinct pleasure of speaking about Noah. I was looking him up. I knew the story from when I was a child about the great flood that came. But I was trying to find out some history on Noah. And I found out a little bit. And it seems like the heroes of the faith, they ain't much, a lot about them except for Jesus. Uh, there, there's a little bit of story about them, and then it goes into how they walk with God. It says Noah was the son of Lamech, uh, which is found in Genesis uh, 5, ch chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. It says Lamech lived 182 years and became the father of a son. And then the first part of 29 says, and he called him his name Noah. So he was the son of Lament. He was also the father of three sons, which is found in Genesis 5.32. Shem, Ham, Hafet, if I'm pronouncing it properly. He was the father of those three. And if you follow that lineage all the way down, if you keep following that lineage of the sons of the sons of the sons that came from this lineage, at the end, you will see that Jesus Christ was part of that lineage. There was a link from the beginning of time, from the first man to our Lord Jesus Christ is connected from beginning to end. The great provider, the great healer, the savior of this world. So today, let us go to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to be reading from verse 8 and 9. In verse 8 and 9, it says this. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generation of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time, and Noah walked with God. Three attributes that we as Christians must adhere to. We must seek to be righteous men and women. We must seek to be blameless, and we must walk with God. What is righteous? Righteous is acting in accordance with divine and moral laws, free from guilt or sin. Conduct one's life in an upright manner and with moral standards that reflects our relationship with the Lord. So everything goes back to the Lord. Everything is surrounded by the Lord. Everything is centered on the Lord, our God and Savior. 
If we are living for our Lord according to his commandment, according to his word, if we're walking with him according to his direction from the Holy Spirit, we will find favor in God's eyes when we are obedient to him and when we are searching him and when we are walking righteously for him. Blameless means without fault. Does it mean that we don't fail? No. We fail. We're human. We make mistakes. But we're blameless. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ has wiped us clean. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness. Surrender it to God. Don't do it again. And you will be found blameless. Favor. The word favor means approving, consideration, or attention. So, to have God's favor over you means that he is paying attention to you. He is considering you. So, when we walk like Noah walked, Noah, it says he was righteous in his time. It says that during his time, there was a lot of wickedness going on. It's so much that it hurt God's heart. It grieved his heart, as the word says. It grieved his heart to see that the creation that he made to bring him glory and to honor him and to serve him had gone away from him and had started doing things for themselves, thinking that they can do everything right, that what they were doing was correct. They, they were doing things that were so degrading to God's creation that God had to really, really consider about he says, I'm going to blot them out. That means I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to take them off this face of the earth. And because of the, their sins, guess what? The poor animals that had nothing to do with it, they were going to be taken out too. Why? Because God created all of them together. So during this time, God was searching. He said, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm really going to do this. But then he saw one, Noah. Oh, I forgot about Noah. No, Noah, he's righteous. He's doing what I'm asking him to. He's been obedient to me. He's living faithfully with me. He's walking side to side. Matter of fact, I talk to him on a regular. We have a conversation every day, you know? And, 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 and he's, he's, he's doing what I'm asking him. Okay, let me warn Noah. So it says, God warned Noah. Did he call him up on the phone? Did he reveal himself to him? The Bible doesn't say, but he said he warned them. So if he warned them, there had to be some type of interaction between God and Noah. Don't you think God can warn you when there's things coming your way that are going to hinder your relationship with God? He still can do that if you're walking with him. Because if you're walking with him, you're next to him. And if you're next to him, then he can just say, hey, Jose, you're going the wrong path. Turn, turn to your right. Now don't go to the left because the left is going to lead you to a bad place. That's the type of relationship that every Christian should yearn. That every day you wake up, you walking with the Lord, that you having communications with him, that you're speaking to him on a daily basis and receiving his message for your life for that day and what he wants you to do. That makes you righteous. Why? Because he is righteous. It says that the Lord is righteous. He is the ultimate person, the, the one that stands for right. He does everything right. There is no fault in our Lord. And if we're walking with him and we're letting him guide us, guess what? We start to reflect what he is. If we call Christians followers of Christ, children of Christ, right? That's what you are, right? You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a follower of Christ. So then why aren't we reflecting Christ on this earth? Why aren't we like Noah, Enoch, or Abel, and all the other heroes of the of the scriptures. Why aren't we walking like them? Why aren't we putting on our capes to shine and to fly for him so that the world can see what he is about? 
the ultimate hero. There's no kryptonite against our Lord. Mm -mm. Superman had kryptonite, and he had to fall down when that little green rock came up. But there's no rock, there's no kryptonite, there is no power that can come against our Lord Jesus Christ. And no one knew that. Because he was fearful of God, he walked with God, he trusted God. He did not see things in advance. But he knew that if God said it was going to happen, it would happen. He had faith. Hebrews chapter 11, 6 and 7 says this. And faith is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Him, God. For he who has come to God must believe, must believe that he is, do you believe he is? And that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. So he rewards you. He gives you what you need. By faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, things that have never happened before, in reverence, it says, he prepared an ark for salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an error, error of the righteousness which is in accordance to the faith. So in order to be righteous, you must have faith in the unseen. Faith is simply that, something that you don't see. You believe it, but you don't see it yet. You believe that one day that trumpet will sound. You haven't seen it yet, but you believe it. You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross from the biblical um, instructions that, that are left behind, the stories that are left behind about that crucifixion. You weren't there, but you believe it's true. And because you believe it's true, you accept him and you believe in him. And because you believe in him, all things are possible because he is the great provider. When we believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, when we walk with him and we follow his instructions and we do exactly what he commands us to do, then we know that we are righteous in his eyes and we are like Noah, obedient to God. What leads me to the next point. Let us turn to Genesis 7, verse 5, where we find our second point. Noah's faith grew because he was obedient to God. Verse 5 says this, Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. It doesn't say he did some of the things that God commanded him to do. It doesn't say he picked and chose what he wanted to do. It said he did all that the Lord had commanded him to do. Obedience requires that. When you're speaking to your child, you expect obedience. Because you're covering them, you're watching over them, you want the best for them, and you instruct them how to do things. If they're disobedient, they'll reap failure. But if they're obedient, they obtain the victory. They'll obtain what they need. God is our Father. He wants us to be obedient to Him. It doesn't mean to build an ark halfway. Or He told me it should be this dimensions and I make it a foot shorter because I don't feel like adding that extra wood on the, on the boat. Or he instructs you to put one window in the ark, and Noah says, nah, I think it would be better if we had more light in the, in the ark. Let's put five, light, five windows on the ark. Those specific instructions given to Noah, which is found in Genesis 6, 11 through 22, 
on how to build an ark. Was it in the lake, the ocean, the sea? Mm -mm. Right there where he stood, in the middle of nowhere, he built an ark. Now, I was wondering, what was Noah's occupation? Well, he must have been a great uh, engineer. He must have been a great builder. And that's what his professor must have been. But when I read and searched, it says he was a farmer. <laughs> he planted wine yards. So that's what he did for a living. But you see, God does great things to people who are obedient to him. That although you may feel not capable of doing these things, God is capable of doing it through you. You are just a mere instrument that he gives you to do what he inquires, requires of you to do. It says, Noah built according to what was instructed of him. Every cubic feet wide, he built it. Every cubic feet in length, he built it. And as high as God said to build it. The three levels were built. Not only did he do that, he put the great gate that entered into the ark. And during this time, it was 120 years that it took him to build this ark because there was only a couple of people helping him. His three sons, his three daughter-in-laws, his wife, and himself building this ark. It says he put in the pitch, which is the, like the, the ceiling, the sealant that, that is put in so that the boat doesn't leak. He did that properly. How he knew this? Only by God's instructions. So when God is instructing you to do something, hear his call. Don't feel that, oh, I'm not capable. I've only been in church for a year, and I really don't know what to do. I'm, I don't have nothing to give, but they're asking me to be in the cleaning ministry. I don't really know how to do that. Listen, just do it. If God has instructed you to start in the cleaning ministry, you don't know where he, you're going to end up at. I started in the cleaning ministry. And look where I'm at today, the, the, the blessing that God has given me, the privilege to speak his word. The parking ministry. People may say, oh, those guys out there all the time, in the rain and the sun, they're directing people. I don't know I could do that. That's just not me. But guess what? That's the greatest privilege that you may have. Why? Because you're the first person that any visitor comes to see. You're the first person to greet them. You're the first person to smile with them. God bless you. First time at our church. Great. Hey, let me tell you something. You park your car right here. There's a special parking for you. Come on. I'm going to walk you to the door and introduce you to our greeters. And I'm, I'm, I'm praying that, whew, man, that God blesses you today. And you do it with a joyful heart. It might seem like a simple job, but it's one of the greatest privileges that you have, that you are the first one to encounter the visitors, the people that God brings here to be fed by him. It's not the preacher. It's not the worship team leader. First person they see is the parking attendant. Then the greeters. The guy at the door, the greeters, then they walk in and they meet you. Before they speak to Pastor Cedric at the end of the service, they're speaking to you. So take the time. If you see a new face, greet them. Love on them. Show them what the church is about, what God has done with you in this church. And you will spread the word of God. In a mighty way, you will be pleasing to God. You will find favor in God because you're being obedient to God. Oh, I don't know that person. I really don't speak to a lot of people. I'm a little afraid to speak. No, I just say, hey, God bless you. Welcome to our church. First time here, right? Your name is? My name is such. Hey, if there's anything I can pray for you about, let me know. Um, conversation may start with, oh, thank you for, for greeting me. Oh, by the way, here's my phone number. Call me. Um, we can have coffee and sometimes we talk a little bit about the church and let you know what, what we're doing here. You don't have to be in leadership to do those things. That is required of every Christian is to greet and love 
and demonstrate God's love to anyone that walks through that door. Don't wait for the ushers to do it. Don't wait for the greeters to do it. Don't wait for the pastors to do it. Don't wait for someone to tell you to do it. Just do it. Because wouldn't you want someone to greet you in a strange place when you first come and you don't know what's going on, you're just coming to visit to see how it is? Wouldn't you want them to greet you and love on you and make you feel like you're at home? The sign says it, welcome home. This is our home here on earth. There's a greater home that we're going to, but, you know, first got to be here. Do the best we can do here. Be obedient to God and everything he instructs you to do. If he commands you to, to, to speak, speak. If he tells you to walk, walk. The e-walk is happening today. How many of you are choosing to go home and relax and watch TV or watch sports or, you know, hey, the playoffs are on. Let me go watch the, the playoffs. Or I got yard work to do. I'm going to cut the grass. Can that wait? Can you go out and join the others and just say, well, I don't know what to do? No, it was simple. God bless you. Here's some information about our church and about God. Can I pray for you? Is there anything I can pray for you? Guarantee you 90% of the time, if you ask a person, can I pray for you? They're not going to reject that. They're not. Because everyone needs prayer. All of us need prayer and covering of God. So if you're available, he walks today. You know, and uh, join us. Because in that walk, you may find someone who is in need of God, and you may be the vessel that God wants to use. And your testimony might be that testimony that puts that person in a comfort place. Well, wow, you understand what I'm going through because you've been through it. Tell me more about your God. Tell me more about Jesus Christ. Tell me when your next service is, and I'll be there. Last point that I want to touch on is Noah's faith helped him gain salvation for him and his family. For him and his family. As we read earlier in the um, earlier verse, it says that because of his faith, Salvation came to him and his family. So if your faith, if you're walking by faith, if you're walking with God and you are reflecting God, guess what? You are preparing for that place of salvation for someone to come and meet the great Savior. You don't have to do anything. Just reflect and show them the way to salvation. You know how many people in this world are so confused, so lost every day? I just woke up this morning, and the first thing I heard on the news, and the news is always terrible. They never talk about anything good. Twelve people were killed in a mall. Maybe some of them were Christians, and they are in a better place, but many of them are not Christians and find themselves in a worse place. Be ready at all times. No matter where you stand, where you go, salvation is at stake. You know why? Because that person that you run into needs to hear about the saving grace of God. That saving grace which Jesus Christ paid the price on Calvary. Don't Hoard it for yourself only. I mean, I know my Lord is wonderful, and I would love to just keep them all for myself. But that's not what he calls us to do. He calls us to share this gift of salvation to others. We are his vessels. We are his instruments. We are the ones that are the new heroes of the faith. Put on your cape and fly high for him, demonstrating his salvation, his mercy, his love. And you will see that he will take control of all those things. Let's build an ark of salvation. Let this be an ark so that others may come to know Jesus Christ. So that they may obtain that salvation that he solely can give. Salvation is at stake, my brothers and sisters. Maybe not for you. You have it. 
but for someone else, maybe in your family, a close friend, a neighbor that you've never spoken to because he's a grouchy neighbor. Uh, he don't like the way I cut my grass. Look beyond that. Look at the heart. He may be calling out to you because he knows that you're a Christian and he sees something in you that's different. How is it that you can smile and laugh and you're going through some turmoils? You're not paying your bills on time. You're, 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 you're sick. You lost a loved one because I have Jesus in my life. Amen. You too can have Jesus in your life. So in closing, Noah was a great hero of the faith because he walked with God. Noah was a great hero of the faith because the righteousness of God reflected through him. Noah was a hero of the faith because he was obedient to God. I challenge you. I challenge you to be a hero for our Lord and Savior, for our God, for Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. Put on the cape of the word of God. Fly as high as you can with the Holy Spirit and utilize those supernatural powers that he is vested you with to share the gospel of salvation to the lost. For those of you that have not experienced Jesus, those of you that have come for the first time seeking something new in your life, I ask you to just simply consider accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will understand what I'm saying, that this joy that he brings to my life, this peace and comfort, it, it can't be compared to anything else on this world world. You can't even explain it until you experience it. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ, I can lead you in a small short prayer. And it goes like this. Heavenly Father, I come to you hearing the words that you've expressed today through your servant. And I ask you, Lord, that you become my hero. That you cleanse me that you forgive me of my sins, that you put in me the power of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that I may too be in tune with you and walking with you and communicating with you, Heavenly Father. I ask you that you come to my life, become my Lord and Savior, and allow me to fly high for you. And for you that have already made a profession of faith, let your faith grow. Ask God to grow your faith that you can walk next to him daily, that you can have conversations with him daily, that you can speak to him daily and hear what he is instructing you to do and that you may be obedient to do what he instructs us to do. And do not fear, for you are a hero of the greatest superhero that may ever live. There is no kryptonite that can come against the power of God. Stand in the power of God. Trust in God. Have faith in those things that you cannot see yet, but believe it done because of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thank you. Next week, be ready. Pastor Cedric is bringing the next hero, and it ain't a man. And as we just close with this song as we worship take the lead of every step I make even if you tell my feet to wait cause where you are is where The depth of me is calling for the tea. I don't want it if you're not in it. I just.
just want you I don't want it if you're not in it I just want you Your heart, your ways Show me your face Your song and your voice Break through the noise I don't want it if you're not in it I just want you I don't want it if you're not in it I just want you I don't want it if you're not in it I just want you I don't want it if you're not in it I just want you Just want you Just want you Just want you God Whisper to me secrets of your heart Cause I want to discover all you are I'm leaning into heaven for a glimpse And I will partner with your presence here again Father, thank you so much for your word, for the worship, Father, for just a time to be with you, to lifting of our hands, Father, the bending of our knees, to be in your presence, Father. Such a privilege, Father. Thank you. Have your way in our hearts as we leave today. Father, all that you have deposited in us, Father, that we keep it close, that we always remember that you are first in all things, Father, that we don't want anything if it's not you that is in it have your way now be with us as we leave in jesus name we pray amen amen you are dismissed oh i'm sorry <laughs> joey's coming right up oh have a die hard joey <laughs> praise god praise god i just want to re-emphasize a couple announcements that i made um, at the beginning of service First is our, if it's your first time here at Commitment Community Church, there is a red bag for you. If you didn't receive one on your way out, just grab a red bag from one of the greeters. There is a, a guest information card that we would love for you to fill out. Um, and this card would allow Commitment Community Church, uh, Church to stay in contact with you, updating you uh, with any announcements, with any events that we're having here at Commitment church so when you're done completing this card please give it to a greeter in the back also as pastor torres uh said we're gonna have our e-walk right after service uh after second service uh 
So if God put it on your heart to come out and reach uh, the community uh, as a church, as one body, as one nation, uh, I would encourage you to do so. Lastly, we're going to have a special uh, setup for our women here, our mothers here at Community Community Church. So uh, I would advise you to please invite a friend, invite a mother, whether it's a mother, a sister, a friend, please invite them next week. We're going to have something special uh, for all the mothers. Um, so at this time, let's just bow our heads and let's just reflect a little on how the Lord will um, help us to give today. today's worship experience uh, was an encouragement to you. If you would uh, please uh, prayfully consider how you may financially uh, support God's kingdom work through Commitment Community Church. Can we all seek the Lord right now on how we should give uh, through our tithes and our offerings? If this is your first time here, uh, we do have several ways uh, to give here at Commitment. Uh, first is traditionally through cash and check, uh, which can be uh, put in an envelope. We do have giving stations in the front here or in the back of the sanctuary where you can just drop them in the giving stations. Also, there's an electronic way through our church website and through the church app. And uh, another way here we have is through text. So you can text the word Commitment Church, one word, to 77977. Again, you can text one word Commitment Church to 77977. Lastly, our greeters will be standing in the back of the sanctuary with baskets to assist you in that way as well. So let's take a moment now to allow God to speak to our hearts about how we should give today. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Father, we thank you for being a God that provides for the needs of your people, for the needs of your church. We pray that you please uh, help us all be consistent in honoring you with our first fruits tithing and support the work of the ministry which is the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that you help us to be obedient and give us instructions on how we should give right now. Father God, we ask that you please take all that is given today through tithe and offerings and multiply it supernaturally. Grow it and anoint it so that your work would expand to all nations so that many more people will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you and we praise you right now for everything you have done and for everything you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. We also pray for our prayer walls. Lord, you know the hearts of your people. So I just pray, oh God, that you meet uh, your people where they are right now, Lord. That you would answer their prayers if it's your will, Lord. I pray also, oh God, that they'll feel your presence right next to them, Lord, as they may grieve of a loss, as they may be struggling with uh, any difficulties, whether it's financially, whether it's physically, whether it's spiritually, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they'll feel your presence in a mighty way, oh God, that they'll know that they're not alone, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that your word, Lord, would just resonate in their hearts as they leave this building, Lord, never from your presence, oh God. May you be with them. May you guide them, and may you protect them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. If you're ever in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey region, we hope to see you in person. But for now, please tune in next week here at Commitment Online.